Hey folks, I'm back to give another try of the preview version of Parallels on the M1 chip. I've got the MacBook Air M1 right over here with 16 gigs of RAM and a MacBook Pro 2019 16 inch with 64 gigs of RAM. Now RAM does take part in virtual machines because the more virtual machines you run at the same time, the more RAM they need allocated. But right now we're not even at that point yet. This is a preview, I just wanna mention that again. In my last video, I tested Parallels with Windows Build. 20231 and that was not successful. The build was completely unstable. I did update Parallels just recently and was able to successfully start up Windows. I'm gonna give this another try right now to see what's gonna happen. My goal here is to run some developer tools on Windows like Visual Studio and to do some comparisons with the speed of the M1 chip versus the Intel Core i9. Now, some of you in the comments mentioned that there are some Dev Insiders builds. We can try doing that as well. If you're part of the Windows on ARM Insider program, you can download Windows Client ARM64 Insider Preview build 20231. And then once you have that, you can update. I believe the latest is 21277, which is on a dev branch. So it's a pre-release, not even a release. So let's first start up Parallels and we're gonna see if we can even get Windows going. So I do have that image. I've reinstalled Parallels. Let me just make sure we know what version we're dealing with here. And right now, I'm on Parallels version 16.3.1, 503.393, which is a technical preview. All right, let's kick up Windows 10 and see what happens. So far, so good. Starting up. Okay, look at that. It started. I even updated the Edge browser here. All right, so I'm not going to change the memory configuration or the processor location just yet. But for now, I just want to see if we can get any tooling installed. So I'm gonna go to Edge, starts up. Let's go to Visual Studio Community. Let's go to Downloads and there it is. Let's grab that. Now I might be barking up the wrong tree here in trying this because as a lot of you have mentioned in the comments, the Windows ARM build might not support the architecture of the software that I'm trying to run right now. So I'm gonna do it anyway because I know that this ran for me at least once in the past. What happened to cause it to break, I don't know, but it looks like it's actually installing right now. So this looks good, I'm hopeful. Let's launch Visual Studio. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on my MacBook Pro while this is still working. So I'm gonna need to update that as well. While that's happening, let's create a new project here. I'm gonna kick up a new Blazor application. Actually, let's go back. I already have a Blazor app here, don't I? Just a brand new Blazor app that I've created in the past using the same image. And I have Blazor app one and Blazor app two in this solution. I believe one of them is a WASM project and the other one is a server project. By the way, Blazor, really cool technology. I have a couple of courses out on Blazor on Coursera. If you have a subscription and you're interested to check it out and learn the technology. It's gonna start up the server and hopefully will run the application. So we've got our Hello World app running in Blazor now. Seems to be working just fine. Pretty happy about that. Now I did wanna compare some of the speeds. So I'm gonna compare the build speed of a new project with that of my Core i9 processor. Looks like Parallels updated fine over here on the MacBook Pro. What I do wanna check is to make sure that our settings are the same, and that's um, the CPU and memory, and it looks like they are. Let me just double check here on the MacBook Air, CPU and memory. I have two processors and four gigabytes of RAM allocated to each one of these machines. So I'm gonna start up Windows 10 here on my MacBook Pro as well. While that's happening, I'm going to create a new project here. So let's close this one. Close solution, create a new project. Uh, you know what, let's do another Blazor app. Blazor app, it's called Blazor app three. Create, let's make it a WebAssembly app and create. Now I'm hearing, and you might be hearing this too through the microphone, a lot of noise coming from a MacBook Pro as usual. Ooh, that's very hot. All right, let's start up Visual Studio. Hey, there we go. Create a new project. Let's go with a Blazor app. Next, Blazor app three to keep it consistent, create, and we'll go with a WASM project. And let's create that. Okay, I 
think we're about the same place now with these two solutions. They should be identical using Visual Studio Community Edition and Blazor Wasm, which runs on .NET Core 3.1. And finally, I'm going to press the play button on these at the same exact time. Now I should probably for scientific purposes and those that are sticklers out there, run this from a command line and build it from the command line. Yes, you're probably right, but maybe we'll see some visual indication of which one will be faster when the browser pops up with the finished build. I'm gonna hit these at the same time and um, let's see. Look, I'm just happy this thing runs on the M1 at this point. More testing, of course, will be needed. More rigorous testing is gonna be coming, but this is a good start. The build has started on both of these and it does look like the MacBook Pro is a little bit ahead here. It's already loading the browser and it's loaded the application. We're still waiting for the build to finish on the M1. Still waiting. In the meantime, the app is already loaded and it's running here. And finally, it runs and loads on the M1. Now, as far as interaction with these, it's gonna be pretty instant because it is a WASM project. So there is no back and forth between this and the server. So that's all looking good. For those of you that are curious, let's take a look at Task Manager on both of these machines. And yes, I am running different browsers here. So maybe it's worth doing another run with Microsoft Edge on both of them. And there are the stats for you, Task Manager tasks, as far as memory usage and CPU usage. So hopefully that helps some of you out there that are curious about that kind of thing. I'm gonna stop both of these at the same time here. Stopping both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so used to saying that by now. Let's start this in a different browser. I'm gonna use Edge for both of these. Okay, and let's kick this off. Again, we'll try this at the same time. Now the application has already been built previously, so the second launch should just be a quick launch of the pre-built app. And the MacBook Pro wins this one. As we've seen before from all my .NET related tests so far, the MacBook Pro is a winner when it comes to building things directly on the MacBook Pro in .NET. And now you can see that in Windows 10 Preview, running on Parallels Preview, <laughs> also it's a little bit slower on the M1. Now I know that some of you out there are gonna be not satisfied with this test, but I hope you leave some comments down below of constructive things that my next test can involve. Don't just complain about these tests not being accurate. For those of you that do leave constructive comments, really appreciate it, thank you very much. And to conclude this video, I just wanna say Parallels is now working and I'm pretty happy about that. So this is exciting. That means for those of you that are considering getting the new Macs with the M1 chip, will have a path forward to run Parallels and run a Windows virtualized environment in there. It's not fully baked yet, but it is on the way and looking promising. If you found this video useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up so other folks can find it and hopefully benefit as well from the video as well as from your comments. And do consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I will be doing more testing comparing the M1 to my Dell XPS as well as other machines. Thanks for showing up and watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.